Hello, everybody. My name is Marc Alochet. I'm a researcher at Ecole Polytechnique in France, and I'm very happy to introduce today the new research work we recently started with John Paul McDuffie from Wharton School, University of Philadelphia, and Christophe Midler from Ecole Polytechnique as well. Is software the new frontier for the automotive term mobility sector? The summary of this presentation is quite straightforward with introduction, research questions, theoretical background, methodology, industry context, use case result, discussion, and conclusion. Let's move directly to our introduction. There are obvious signs of transformation of mobility in the future. Why dealing systems started with Uber, new experimentation at scale of Robotaxi with Waymo and Cruise, many automakers are now operating e-car sharing system, not talking about mobility as a system. The question therefore is, what are the impact of this transformation on product on industry application? More broadly, we just wonder what the future mobility system look like, which companies on are going to play which roles? What are the consequences for work and employment? Of course, this is too early in this transition to draw any broad conclusion, but we are just in time to frame the quick question, make initial observation, and try to interpret what we can observe. What we can see today is the increasing centrality of software in the automotive industry. All the new entrants in the pure electric car sector, so Tesla, NIO, Xpeng, of course, they all produce only BVs, but they also all leverage an innovative software architectures that potentially allow them to outpace, outpace incumbents. Their ambition to start with a software, namely a vehicle operating system, and to build the hardware around it. This is where incumbent OEMs have so far taken a function by function approach to developing software. What they try to do is to turn the potential handicap of starting from scratch into a major advantage, namely a more open and scalable software on hardware architecture. Therefore, we slightly modify our question to say, well, okay, when software is a starting point for vehicle design, to enable all the new mobility related technologies, how will the current product and industry architecture change and thus shape the future ecosystem? Recently, we have finished a study which was about the introduction, the transition to electrification. It's a paper mirroring in production, early evidence from the scale up of battery electric vehicles. And our conclusion is that. So far, or not yet, we haven't seen any transformation of the automotive industry under the impact of electrification. So before to start this new study about the impact of software simplicity, we just want to check if the situation is different from the one we are actually experimenting with electrification. So we just make a comparison. Uh, we say that electrification only affected some components or functions. Most of them were inside the OEM capabilities where software centricity, centricity affects everything, any function of the vehicle. Automakers have applied a no more than you make strategy, while in software, most OEMs have a function by function approach with incremental changes, which is fairly different from software first design. In terms of production, all automakers manufacture BEV in their conventional assembly plants alongside ICs, and newcomers use a very similar process. When we consider firmware or software over the air, it requires much more new capabilities, mainly after the production stage. Lastly, in the case of electrification, we are still in the basic value proposition, which is still individual A to B mobility, when software open a huge number of other business models and servitization possibilities. Therefore, new question is, will incumbents be able to develop the capabilities to compete in software-centric mobility as they have so far been able to do with electrification? 
In terms of theoretical background, on one side, we have the mirroring hypothesis, which says that the organizational tie within a project firm will correspond to the technical dependencies in the work being performed. While on the other side, you have the no more the new make strategy I've already cited, which basically states that integrators have more capabilities since they have patents, they have um, laboratories, and they have the capacity to explore an area which is much broader than the actual product they realize. In between, you have the partial mirroring, which says at the time of technological, technological change, uh, firms may prefer to have integrated organizational arrangements until the understanding of what the new technology means improves. This can either be a transitional period when the product is in advance versus the organization, or it could be the outcome of a deliberate strategic choice. In this situation, we can consider that the no more than you make strategy is a deliberate strategic choice for partial mirroring. And lastly, this last contribution from Carlis Baldwin um, in the second volume of uh, design, which says, well, okay, when we have a look to introduction of new technology, it moves towards an ecosystems, which means groups of autonomous firms and individuals whose actions and investments are complementary. So this is the theoretical background we want to have in mind before investigating this new research. But the analysis of a software-centric design of a new vehicle is not so easy. Not so easy to have direct access to software to make a direct analysis of sources code. So we use a proposal made by Barley, which says that change in works of employment associated with intelligent technology are likely to propagate vertically throughout the vertical substrate of the industry and horizontally across all system. We start with a vertical substrate, which is derived from the work done by Taka Fujimoto and Jolpan McDuffie, which was presented in 2018 in Tokyo, when they state that the new landscape, if I can say so, the automotive industry is constituted by the high ground, which is platform, vehicle, big modules, system, hour software, low vest, low sky, where you have the vehicle connectivity to direct environment, V2X, and high sky, where you have the mobility service management. I have just adapted this framework to make obvious that we also need to consider the low ground, which means the road infrastructure, urbanist rules, energy distribution network, traffic regulation, and so on. And we first concentrate on the vertical substrate before studying how we have a propagation horizontally across the whole system. In this slide, we don't pretend to describe what is the full history of the automotive industry, uh, but just say that we consider that the automotive industry very recently have a full coverage of this technical stack. If I just summarize it, it starts at the end of the 19th century till roughly the mid of the 1930s. And at this time, this is the creation of this industry. So on the high ground, you have dominant design of the vehicle, start of mass production. And you also have a lot of very important intense cooperation with the low ground, because at the same time, you need to create the road infrastructure to define what is an energy distribution network, define traffic regulation and so on. In the next step, which is quite long from the 1930s to the 2000s, um, we are in a situation where the industry, of course, has introduced new technologies, but in a very controlled way. And in terms of production, this is the introduction of lean production. The interaction of low ground are less important because this industry is now installed. And what we basically see at the low ground is, of course, evolution of Urbanist rules and development of mega cities. Between 2000 and 2015, this is where we see a first escape to low sky or high sky. Still, control development of new technologies, but this is also the first navigation emergency call services. 
on the low ground, we have the introduction of electronic toll, for instance. But when we move to the low sky, we see the introduction of telecommunication control units in vehicles, connectivity with smartphones. We can't say that there is really a nice sky because this telematic services management are still using conventional ISIT systems. And if we move to 2015 and what's happening now on for the future, so we have a forced integration of electrification on the first experimentation of scale or initiative in mobility services. On the low ground, you have the development of new urban structures on regulation to enable the development of mobility services. We can see the real apparition of the first V2X services even if obviously not of them are already implemented. And we also can observe that mobility services on platform management are now installed in the cloud. So considering this full coverage of the technical stack, we have decided to study a use case. This one is an e-car sharing service, which is developed by the European automaker. And before explaining how the introduction of this service has been done, I just want to quickly explain how it works. If I start with the customer viewpoint, so you need to create a customer account to the e caching service, then you can make a reservation of the vehicle. Once the vehicle is, the, reser the vehicle reservation is made, that at the back end of the car sharing system, you send a reservation code to the vehicle. So it uses V2X function with a 4G communication on firmware over the air to store this reservation code in the vehicle. Next step, the customer has to move to the vehicle. So it's localization of the vehicle or navigation, basically walk to the vehicle. When the customer arrives close to the vehicle by using his smartphone on the Bluetooth communication, the reservation code is checked. And if it is the right customer for the right vehicle, then you can open the door of the vehicle. He can start the e-motors, again, with his Bluetooth communication between the smartphone and all the ECUs, which are inside the vehicle. Then after that, in the low ground, he's going to use the car. And when he has finished to use the car, he's going to park it. Then he can stop the e-motor, close the doors. And now the vehicle is going to send back to the back end of the system, the vehicle localization for the next customer to find the vehicle, as well as some information about the vehicle. Of course, the distance, which has been traveled, which is very important for paying um, the, car, the car sharing service, but also information about the state of the battery, for instance, are there any faults in the vehicle and so on. And the last operation, of course, for the customer is to pay per use. I just also want to say that you have very important information at the back end of the car sharing system. In the high sky, you have vehicle booking and payment, I've already mentioned, but you have also fleet management system, how to allocate an available vehicle to a customer, customer relationship management and vehicle database. How do you stay and exploit all this data related to the vehicle usage and information at the low ground? You have the real management of operation made by the operator, which means charging the battery, maintaining, repairing, and cleaning the vehicle. Let's explain what is a car sharing service. I can present um, how this implementation has been done by this European comic. Basically, we can see that we have two different strategies. The first one, in 2017, there is a strong top-down requirement to start this service, and we are in a situation of design to delivery. What we can see in this solution is basically the reuse of existing high ground solution, communication at the vehicle level, and access to the vehicle, all the non-existing functions which are required to have a e car sharing service are contracted with a third party. So the third party is responsible for the vehicle data storage and the communication between the vehicle and the e-car sharing service. The second strategy, which started in 2019, is clearly designed to e-car sharing. 
And the idea is to have a car sharing ready vehicle. The first action which is taken by the automaker is in fact to become the owner of the vehicle which are produced by the vehicle during the service. Second operation is to add a new ECU to replace the one provided by the third party supplier, which is easier and cheaper to install in the vehicle. And after that, all the communication function on the low sky and high ground levels are progressively integrated inside the vehicle. In terms of discussion, what can we learn from this initial observation? Firstly, the add-on strategy, which is an answer time to market to a top-down demand, is not sustainable, both technically and economically. It only works because this is a given context of a platform architecture and technical solution. Any adaptation to another platform, other vehicle would be complicated and expensive, and the automaker, automaker is not the data owner. He has to pay fees to the third party suppliers to access to data, which are produced by the vehicle he operates, and to pay development costs for any adaptation. The integration strategy, conversely, confirms in general the integration capacities of automakers, even in case of innovative system. It also confirms the importance of being legally responsible to customers and governments for meeting regulatory requirements and respect to safety. This new virtual key, virtual key system, which is going to replace by an integrated function the use of the smartphone, has many safety, security, and regulatory, regulatory implications. And the automaker consider is the only one to have the ability to really develop and integrate this function. It could also inform an in-depth modification of platform structure towards software centricity, new potential, the potential new revenue stream with data generated during vehicle use, and it could also inform a platform leader strategy as the, automa as the automator, automaker can provide to e-car sharing operator a vehicle ready to operate associated with the data collection and storage system. But this is also what we don't learn from this initial observation. Even if we can distinguish two strategies, add-on versus native integration, we don't know who is doing what. How will that change inside, outside the automaker? Who between the automaker, the software company, the third-party supplier, E car sharing operator has learned on what have they learned. Second observation is it takes three steps on eight, nine years to reach a fully native architecture for mobility system. Is it fast enough to catch up with customers or just to take the lead among incumbents? We don't know yet what could be the future structure of the automotive turn mobility industry. Is data generated during vehicle car sharing is a real new revenue? And can an incumbent automaker play the role of a platform leader in the field of mobility service? Therefore, in terms of conclusion, this is too early in the transition to do broad conclusions, and this is obvious limitation of the current work. Or if we go back to our initial question about the impact of software centrality for the automotive term mobility sector. On an empirical viewpoint, we want to understand what software jobs are prioritized, who is are removed, who is winning the war for talent, who is learning faster, software firms, tech players about high ground, or auto firms about low on the high sky. What will be the organization of this new industry? And more conceptually, we want to understand which new knowledge we can bring to the field of product and industry architectures and ecosystem. Therefore, we propose to continue the initial observation of the same case, and this time to try to move along horizontally across all systems by means of interview of key actors inside and outside the automaker organization, and try to use the DSM approach, I say try because using DSM is 
sometimes very complex or complicated, as we want to calculate the cost of the transition and to build the team interaction matrix to understand how easy it is to make this transition. We also want to expand observation by investigating other cases. And as we have also observed that often product architecture change first, and then the industry architecture change, but in fact, causality can be both ways. We started with product architectures, and we also aim at investigating the big picture of industry architecture. Who does what? Who are the players involved in new industry? Strategic moves? What trends can we observe? So it's now over for this presentation, and I will be very happy to answer your question during the colloquium.